welcome back in here to News Junkies. My guest this week, the very lovely and talented Michelle Hubbard, our guide to the unknown. And Michelle, as always, welcome in here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, listen, you have a little something different for us today. We're going to be talking about two books that you have written. Uh, one is called Grad School Essays and Law School Essays. And a lot of individuals I know would probably benefit by one or both of these publications. And this is something that you have been involved with for many years, right. helping people to get into grad school, into law school. And there is, of course, a process. Not only have, do they have to demonstrate themselves academically, but they need to persuade the admissions people that they're worthy of being enrolled at a particular institution. So the question begs itself, and we'll launch off from here, how important are essays in that application process? Oh, they're huge. The uh, essays and the resume are parts of the application that the applicant actually has control over. The numbers, they're what they are. How many other people are applying, they're what they are. But your essay and your resume, that's where you control the content. And that's where you can make your unique, your powerful, your best impression. Well, I, I must share a little personal vignette and then we'll move on. Years ago and in another lifetime, <laughs> I worked for uh, a couple of different schools as a financial aid officer. And I would give advice to say, look, if you want to get the scholarships that are out there, you need to draft an essay. And you need to make sure that it is addressing the subject matter. You have to be mindful of content, uh, word count, good grammar. All of these things are very essential as well as making them unique. And I would think the similar rule of thumb would apply to these. Oh, absolutely. And for the grad school applicants especially, you are facing different requirements for your essay depending not only on what school you're applying to, but what program you're applying to. And for example, psychology applicants can for one school be required to write an essay of three pages, pick the topic, or for another school have maybe as many as 10 to 15 questions you asked to answer. So it's important to, first of all, read the instructions because the school gets offended when they think you're sending a boilerplate essay to them. And then to second of all, make it your unique experience, fill in the details because that's what's gonna separate you from everyone else. Not necessarily the most dramatic story or the ringing achievements, but your unique details of what's made a big impact on you. So what I'm taking away from this, uh, a lot of people may say, well, I'll, I'll do some research and maybe find a template somewhere, and you're saying that's not the way to go. No, that really isn't, um, especially for the grad school applicants. Now, for law school applicants, for the most part, you're asked to write two and a half pages, topic of your choice. And that can be a little bit more structured format, and the one that I recommend, and if you do have a grad school that allows you to have this type of a format, a brief introductory paragraph, then two to three paragraphs that you say what you're going to be telling them about. You, you describe your challenge, you describe the situation, whatever it was that made the impact on you, and then a school-specific paragraph, which is very important, um, and then last is a concluding paragraph. So to an extent that there's a formula, that's the one that I recommend uh, in particular for law school applicants. But if a, a school is asking you to respond to three different questions and they don't come in the same order as the format, you go with what the school is asking for. And it's very important to follow that format. As you've indicated, uh, that's what the school looks for. That's how you're going to be uh, judged and reviewed upon as opposed to just submitting any old thing that comes to mind. Well, they want to know that you have taken the time to pay attention to what they're asking for and to give them that. And uh, they also want to feel like they're special to you. It's almost like dating, I tell my clients. You know, pay the school some compliments. Let them know that you are paying attention to who they are, what they want, and what they want from you. So it does take some research from the applicant to make sure that the essay conforms with what the school wants 
and what the school is all about. Absolutely, most definitely, um, because it does vary. And also, it's good to look through your application because if a school gives you the opportunity to write some sort of an optional essay, maybe about an adversity that you've uh, experienced, maybe about some glitch in your numbers, your test score, or your GPA, go ahead and give it to them as a separate essay where and how they require that because it's another opportunity for you to once again tell your story your way. I would imagine that the institutions would also put a time limit as to when you have to get these essays in and in order for them to review it. So the idea is not to procrastinate or put it off. Oh my gosh, that is my number one tip for any applicant is contrary to what you might think, you do not do your best work at the very last minute. And a good essay, first of all, requires several drafts. Second of all, requires some really specific reading because what I found with some of my own clients is they may start out by naming, they're applying to Harvard, in the body, they'll use Columbia, and at the end, maybe Berkeley, that's the kiss of death. Now, your friends may not read with the kind of specificity that picks up something as subtle as, did you use the right name of the school you're actually applying to in this essay? They may help you with some grammar, and that's awesome stuff to have. So you need to be really alert. You need to keep having maybe different reviews for different specific things so that these little errors that can really trip up the way you're actually your entire application is perceived happen. Well, with the, the grammar, how important is the grammar and sentence structure in preparing one of these essays? Well, it's important because it makes the impression of how articulate are you. And it also can glitch up your expression of your story and your ideas and these details that make you uniquely you if you're using the wrong word. Or uh, if you ha should have a comma, that keeps you from sounding maybe, you know, like a psycho killer or something if you keep running on with the words. Um, so it's important to at least have enough of a, a mastery of grammar to make a real clear communication of what this idea, what this feeling in your heart is. And I know that with a lot of people that use PCs or laptops to construct their essays, there is spell check. But beyond spell check, wouldn't it be a, a, a good idea for a second, maybe even a third or fourth pair of eyes just to read through this before it's being submitted. Oh, absolutely. Definitely, definitely. Because um, spell check may say you've spelled your word correctly, but we have a lot of instances in English where one word is spelled two ways and has totally different meanings depending on which one you're using. Well, the classic example that I would give in uh, my financial aid uh, demonstrations and talks because I would go into the classroom and review everything and give kind of an overall view of what financial aid is all about. And when it came to writing essays to apply for scholarships, I would give this example. Don't say it's made in America and spell made, M-I-A-D. <laughs> Make sure it's M-A-D-E. Right. You know, and the same thing for other um, spell check items like it was good and if you put G-O-D, yeah, it would pass spell check, but that's not the context exactly. of that particular word. Right, right, yeah. And you bring up an interesting point when you're talking about financial essays. If you are going to be doing financial essays, applying for financial aid, scholarships, a lot of times what they want to see and will even specifically ask about is if there was any financial hardship that you've had to overcome uh, that impacted your GPA, say. Well, write about that there, and then write about something different in your essay so that you have all of these different facets of yourself being uh, uh, revealed to the admissions committee. So be aware, again, of what the financial aid essay is going to ask of you, and then what the either statement of purpose for grad school or personal statement for law school is going to ask of you. And then you have a strategy for, uh, you know, how much information about yourself are they really allowing you to give in your own words? Well, you had mentioned kind of a, a three-point plan, and let me transition to the area that I'm most familiar with, and that is writing for news. 
you have your opening statement, the body, and a concluding statement, which is what you're saying. But shouldn't all three intertwine so that they send a very clear message as to what you're trying to communicate to that admissions officer? Absolutely, because your admissions reader is very busy. They may be totally focused on your application package and get a phone call or get an email or have to run to a meeting and then come back to it. So what I recommend is in the introductory paragraph, you say what you're going to write about. I had to overcome these challenges and they made me stronger. Then the two to three paragraphs in the body are what were these challenges and how did you overcome them and then how did that impact your decision to go to either law school, grad school, whatever program in grad school. Then a school specific paragraph because this is where you give the school again this kind of unique attention that they want. You can show them what you've researched about their school, how you're a good fit for their program, what you're going to do with your education after you receive it that ties in with what their alumni program does. And then you end once again with a concluding paragraph that mirrors the introductory paragraph. Here's what I wrote about, sure would love to come here, a very nice wrap-up sentence. And with that introductory statement, shouldn't that really be a hook for that uh, officer then to go, well, this looks really interesting, I need to read the rest? Yes, and a hook in this instance may not be what you think. It doesn't mean it has to be dramatic and then I almost died. What to an already super busy admissions reader who has all sorts of essays that meander all over the place and start with really long quotes that they have no idea how this relates to this person. What stands out as a really great hook is something that's very tightly, clearly written and ends with, and this is why I'm applying to the exact specific name of the school and program. In a typical essay for either grad school or law school, how, how many sentences would you recommend that a potential student would write in that introductory remark? Two, three, four, ten? Yeah, I recommend three to four. That's what I have always counseled my clients, yeah. Three and that four. way it, it, it's a really a brief summary exactly. of what's to follow. Yeah, um, I've, I learned in a business writing, a letter writing class, that um, most important paragraphs of your communication are the first one and the last one. So, assuming that that's maybe what's going to stick the most with your admissions reader, in your first paragraph you want to let them know what's the most important thing, this obstacle, this situation, this experience, sure love your school, and then same thing at the end, so that the reader goes away with knowing, okay, that's the one who uh, had the financial adversity, um, okay, now I remember who I'm looking at. And this becomes important as well as, let's say something happens and you're waitlisted. So when they're reviewing again who they're going to now uh, issue an invitation to attend to, they'll go back and if they can get a real quick, oh yeah, that's who that is from either your first or last paragraph, then that gets you sent that letter of invitation a lot sooner. Wonderful. What, let, let's shift gears okay. just a little bit. I'm a, a potential student for either grad or for law school okay. and I'm starting to write out my essay. Give us some pitfalls or traps or mistakes that are commonly made or have people fall into when they write these essays. Well, uh, first of all uh, is your topic. You don't need to be writing about something that shows them how much you know about this subject already. You don't have to write a legal brief. You don't have to write some sort of scientific uh, uh, research paper. They want to know you're open-minded and educable. What they want to hear about is who you are, what makes you unique, and imagine that this essay that you're writing is taking the place of a personal interview. What would you like to say about yourself face-to-face -to, -face to someone that this essay is taking the place of? And so it could be something as simple. I, may I share a story you may. with you? Um, I was working with a law school applicant, and she couldn't figure out what she wanted to write about. And she started writing about this internship in Washington, D.C. And she said, no, I just don't like it. It doesn't sound personal. I don't like it at all. And I said, well, you know, what do you want to write about then? And she said, well, the only thing I've ever done that I really liked was I was in Future Farmers of America throughout high school. And I said, well, okay, let's write about that. 
So she wrote about pigs and raising them and showing them at the country fair. And she was the president of her club, and she ended up being able to travel you know, throughout the United States and make some presentations. So we showed leadership skills, and we showed time management skills, and we showed work ethic you know, throughout the essay through her far Future Farmers of America experience raising pigs. Well, she was admitted to her number one law school choice, and in the letter they said, we'd love to have you attend our student body, but we don't have any pigs here. <laughs> <laughs> so not only did she get accepted, but it made a really unique impression that they were willing to reflect back to her and kind of joke about. And do you have any follow-up as to how she did in law school? I didn't know. You know, um, I'm lucky if I get to find out that they were accepted because the people that I'm working with, these people in undergrad are so busy. So once they get accepted into their programs, very rarely do I hear back from someone. But uh, I did get to hear that that was, she, she sent me a copy of the letter, so I oh, didn't that, hear that, that, is, much. That, that is that is wonderful. <laughs> you know, and sometimes, I, going back to the financial aid days, every now and then, and we're talking many, many years ago, that this all took place. I might get stopped in a store, um, out at a park or, you know, someplace. Bill, thank you so much. Bill, do you remember? And it's like, oh my gosh. And by and large, I remember the bulk of the people I've, I've helped along the way because you get to know them because every, oh, definitely. every individual is unique to their particular circumstances. Sure, and when you help people with these types of essays, you get to know them in ways that sometimes their own friends maybe don't know them as thoroughly as we end up knowing each other by the time uh, we've crafted a personal statement. Exactly. So, you have law school essays right. and grad school essays. Right. How can people get a hold of these books? They're on Amazon.com. Uh, uh, the complete title of the book is Personalize Your Grad School Essays or Personalize Your Law School Essays. And if you type that in, that'll take you to these books. And it's available as a Kindle book or as a, uh, a hard copy book. Wonderful. And again, as always, I want to give you an opportunity if people want to get a hold of you personally and maybe discover more about these two books or um, your work as a life coach because after all you're the official guide to the unknown here at Heritage Media. How can they get a hold of you? Yeah, thank you. And you know, make no mistake that applying to grad school and law school is an unknown. And uh, it's nice to have someone going through it with you and that's why I've put everything that I learned as an admissions consultant into these books because I'm, I'm backing away from doing that work and I want to continue to help people. So yeah, thank you for letting me be able to uh, share my, my contact information. It's Michelle Hubbard, number four, letter U, at gmail.com and my website is michelleforyou.com. Wonderful, Michelle Hubbard our guide to the unknown and author of law school essays and grad school essays. And we thank you so much. Thank and you. We'll see you next time. I'm Bill DeFoy. You're watching News Junkies, a production of the Heritage Media Group.